Okay, guys, I promised we would go over this a little bit. So this is a TPIS manifold. It's not quite virgin. You can see it's got just a little touch on it. But I was also told that TPIS may have been cast by Edelbrock, and they did a little bit of they did a little bit of action on the uh, the round interface, and uh, it actually worked out better than the the Edelbrock. I don't know how true that is. But I'm going to tell you what we did. We grabbed the other head that's completely virgin, and I CC'd it. Let's take a look at the numbers. Okay, the chambers are 66.5. They should be 67, close enough. The intake port CC'd at 179.5, even bigger than I thought they were. The exhaust was 67.5 cc's, completely stock. So, that kind of makes sense while the, while the first head flowed so well, right? But this one didn't. It topped out on about almost 10 CFM less. So, it's always interesting to, to try, you know, and see what you get. You can take a look at these numbers versus the, uh, the other head completely stock. The other head completely stock was better. Okay, the other head completely stock was over 200 at 0.3. And I made a mistake here. <laughs> I did the TPI. <laughs> uh, I did the TPIS on this completely stock head and then put the clay on the wrong pipe, <laughs> on the wrong tube of the TPIS. So if you take a look at the one, the column on the right, and the column with the X on it, that's how much of a difference a clay radius makes. Okay? So with a completely stock head, completely stock TPIS, we can squeak out at 500, 222. Now, we don't have runners on it yet. Stock runners only go about 200, so that would knock it probably down to about 200. But we do have uh, Arizona Speed and Marine uh, runners coming that are supposed to float 260. So, completely stock, that's not bad, considering uh, I think the original stock stuff, 083s only flow like 185, and then go through the base and the runners and everything. It's way less. It's probably 160, 155. CFM altogether. I don't have a, a bone stock pair of uh, 083s to test, but they're pretty bad stock. Okay, here's my ported stocker. I also flowed this right after I flowed the TPIS. I wanted to see if my ported stocker would do any better, but let's go over some of the important differences on these two intakes. Okay, here we're going from round, and we're pretty doing a pretty sharp turn to a semi-rectangular area, right? And then we have another sharp turn here, where it's rectangular, and then it's it's relatively small rectangular, and opens up to the interface, which is a tall rectangular at a steep angle. Take a look how much different the TPIS is. First of all, you've got a lot more metal here, right? These are much fatter. We're going to take a look at the inside, too. Notice how smooth this curve is. This curve is, like, right here. It's right at the end. It doesn't even have a nice, a nice sweeping curve. It does after I put one in, but factory it doesn't. This curve here, notice how slow a curve that is. Right? Completely different setup. Plus, these runners are bigger. That's why they call it a big mouth. How much bigger are they? I don't have a completely stock base, so I can't tell you. But are they as big as my ported out stocker? Let's take a quick look. Okay, TPISs measure 1.655 opening. Ported stockers are just a little bit bigger. And you can see on the ported stockers, there's not really a lot more you can do with them. 
Okay, my ported stocker. Let's go in a decent amount. And this is what we get. We get 1.38. Okay, about the same size in on the TPIS 1.6. Noticeably bigger, right? Noticeably bigger. Okay, let's take a quick look at this. All right, how I mellowed those turns the best I could. The center section, I made it more of an oval. I took as much out of the top and the bottom as I felt safe to do. And, uh, the turns going out the manifold face are as smooth as we can get, as straightened as much as we can get. All right, gonna try a little bit different lighting. I didn't like that lighting that we were using before. And you know what? Can't see anything with this lighting. Let's do it the way we did the last one. Okay, absolutely huge difference, okay? The one thing I don't really like is this edge here gains a huge amount of area right after that. Now, the question came up, we better off leaving this sharp or are we better off radius this into the added area? I think you guys need to talk about that in the, uh, the comments section. But it looks like a way better design. Let's flip this over. Okay, so I measured the TPIS, and it's bigger than my ported out stocker. Completely stock. Interesting, right guys? Okay, a little harder to show, but the same spot in the TPIS versus my stocker. Okay, I gotta beat, I gotta beat a lot on that turn. Okay, we'll take a quick look at the ported stocker. You guys have seen it before. All right, it doesn't reflect nearly as well because it doesn't have a cuttered finish. But overall, it's a it's a really nice casting. The, the interface here is a little bit smaller than a 1204, which is good because you want a gasket match to a 1204. It's uh, it's decently thick, quite a bit thicker than the, the stocker, so we could put a bit of a curve in that roof if we wanted to, like we did to the stocker. Now let's see how these two float against each other with the completely stock head. Okay, really interesting to look at, guys. So, this is the TPIS stock with the clay on the right runner for a change. And this is my ported stocker. These pluses and minuses are in reference to this. My stocker beats it everywhere. It comes damn close to the flow the head did, which I think is amazing. Now, what's really interesting is I wanted to see what my ported stocker flows, and I put it directly on the bench. How I did that, I will show you. Okay, this is the best way I could think of doing it, right? I get one of my calibration plates. It's big enough to cover the hole we make a gasket material we hold it on there as tight as we can i'm not going to drill uh, this out and bolt it to anything it may not be perfect if i get a couple cfm leakage i don't really care but it was interesting how much it flowed now this flowed 273 through the heads that flowed 277 put it on the bench like this it barely cracks 250 how is that possible charlie I think I have an answer. When the air is exiting, right, it's coming out this way at a high rate of speed. And it wants to go, it wants to go the same angle as our flange. Okay, so if we put this right on the ceiling, take a look at that interface angle we have. It's a really steep turn. So the air can't stay to the inside of that. It, it's gonna it's gonna overshoot before it goes into the bench, okay? And this is gonna want to turn before it, so it makes it act like the opening is way smaller. It does the same thing on the cylinder head, if you really want to know. So 
but in in that, in reality it flows a lot better if it's set up right to the cylinder head than it does right into an open batch okay might as well take a quick look at our swirls all right we got a decent curve this way at 500 we're 2300 and change not bad and this one 500 we're 2000 and change not bad as long as we're over like 1700 we're good okay anything extra really kind of wasted energy but it'll be fine it's a street engine we want to get as much torque out of it as we can now of course those numbers will change when we add the uh, the runners and the plenum on it but good to keep keep track of what it's doing you know it has it does enter the port at a little bit different angle so it's going to have a little bit different swirl I was actually surprised that my ported stalker did as well as it did against uh, that TPIS. It's a nice, it's a nice intake. Now, depending upon uh, how we do, that in that lower base will get a ton of work or it will not get a ton of work. As of right now, I'm not touching it because if he can't get the runners he wants, this whole project may get changed. So I'm not touching it right now. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.